Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. It gives you everything you need in one place for free, which you can use right from your phone or computer. Creation tools allow you to record and edit your podcast so it sounds great. They'll even distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard everywhere. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. You can easily make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Awesome. Welcome back to another episode of It Is What It Is podcast. I'm your host, Cody Kelly. Look, I have an amazing panel, an amazing episode. I'm super geeked, excited about this one because... All of my guests, first of all, showed up. I don't have anybody that didn't show up any last minute cancellations. I do not like that. I get it. Life happens. But I just want to thank these individuals. We are covering an episode on mental health, dealing specifically with burnout. I think we can attest that burnout is a real thing and it has affected everybody in every facet of life. I have some returning guests that are going to let, introduce themselves, like Anthony Amen, Dr. Tawanda Harris Fuller, Dr. Jonathan Shepard. But I have an amazing new guest. I'm so geeked, connected with her. She's just been amazing. We hit it off uh, all the way from Mumbai. Let me read her bio. This is how just amazing uh, she is. An Emicut is alumni of the University of Mumbai. She holds a master's degree in mass communication and journalism, and is currently on the path to pursuing a PhD in the same field. Namika is an angel investor for women entrepreneurs. She closely is associated and involved with several humanitarian movements in India. She currently resides in Mumbai, but often travels to satisfy her wanderlust. Namika is also a writer, spoken word artist. Her podcast is called Spoken Word. Look, subscribe to it. It's on IG. I follow it. Binemica, it is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Um, just amazing, amazing talent, just amazing gift to humanity. I'm so glad that she is on. I'm so glad that everybody here is on. How's everyone doing? Great. Awesome, man. Not burned out, let me tell you. Not burned out. The antagonist of the episode. <laughs> Mimika, tell tell the audience what time is it in India right now? <laughs> it's four thirty a.m. Jeez, four thirty in the morning. That's how committed she is. So there's no excuse, people. There's no excuse. Look, I'm gonna just hit the ground running. Oh no, I'm gonna introduce you guys. Andy, tell everybody what are you doing, where your podcast is located, and I'll do the introductions. And I'll answer the question, ask questions. Yeah. So. My name is Anthony. I'm the owner of Redefined Fitness. We're a personal training studio over in Mount Sinai. I am also the host. I had to grab this because it's hysterical. Health and Fitness Redefined. I have my very own mug. So you guys can subscribe to my show. I do a lot of episodes on health, fitness, how to overcome adversity. And we're doing one like this. I'm stealing Cody's idea. I'm doing a Facebook Live episode on the keto diet. Boom. All right. Hey, look! I'm not on the keto diet. I'm a, like a I'm a bad pescatarian. I'm a great pescatarian, bad vegan. But you can add me on it. I would love to be on it. <laughs> oh, you are so welcome. We're doing pro versus against. We're having people debate the difference of it. It's going to be epic, and I'm hopefully people don't kill each other at the end. <laughs> awesome. awesome! Sounds great. Doctor Harris, introduce yourself. Where can the people Hi. find you? <laughs> I am Dr. Tawanda Harris. I live in Peoria, Illinois, down left Illinois near Peoria. I'm on Facebook, Tawanda Harris Fuller. I'm on Instagram. Uh, I think it's Dr. T2003, I believe, I'm on Instagram. Well, connect with Dr. Oh, Harris. And she and is, I'm a family practice doctor as well. <laughs> uh, Dr. Fuller is amazing. She was uh, one of my doctors at high school. I probably would have flunked out if it wasn't for Dr. Fuller because I kept missing class. But that's another that's another story. <laughs> Dr. Shepard, introduce yourself, my man. <laughs> uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Jonathan Shepard. I am a board certified child, adolescent, and adult psychiatrist. Uh, I have the great pleasure of being with you all again. I serve as a chief medical director of Hope Health Systems, which is a large mental health organization. Uh, in the DMV area out here on the East Coast. And I'm also president of the board of directors of the Black Mental Health Alliance, a non-for-profit that is geared toward education and consultation of mental health issues for people of color. So those are just a couple of things that I do. That's sick. So you know we got some heavy hitters in the room. Look, I want to start it off. First questions are to you, uh, Dr. Shepard, Dr. Fuller. Um, I think like every human being, uh, we pride ourselves on how hard we work. Right. I think if you're a good person, 
there's something in you that wants to work hard, wants to prove their value uh, and produce something that can be exchanged for some type of transaction. And that's how we kind of evaluate life. Right. Uh, so because of this evaluation, we're taught not to be soft. Right. Work hard, work hard, work hard. Medically speaking, are we being soft or is really burnout a real thing? medically like is there a real diagnosis something that is triggered in the internal organs uh and i'll start with you uh dr puller then you dr shepherd so i wouldn't i wouldn't say it's necessarily a medical diagnosis that i know of um but we do re- i read a lot of articles about um, burnout with physicians in general and i think you see it more in the primary care setting than spe- some specialty settings um it is definitely a real thing a lot of patients that's not medical they come to me they complain about being stressed out all the time at the job. They want a uh, week off from work. So, you know, I call it when my field, I would call it when I'm having um, burnout, I would say I need a mental day. And I need a day off. I just stay at home. I pamper myself. Um, but one thing I did think about it regarding this court take off at least one week every three months just so I can be, you know, regroup, you know, cause after a while you just work, work, work and you get stressed out. Then you're like, I hate my job. I can't do this. So you just need to take a break from it. And then you can come back and you feel re- rejuvenated and you feel like you're ready to go. So, but yeah, it's a real thing. And it's something that we definitely need to talk more about, you know, I'm sure. So. Awesome. Dr. Shepard, is this a real thing? Uh, like you said, you deal with that aspect of uh, psychiatry, right? Like uh, I probably mispronounced it. You know, I didn't. I didn't go. I'm not a doctor. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> is 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 it a real thing? Is there is there a chart? Is there an MRI? Is there some type of scan that we can do and we can pinpoint and say that's it? Well, let me tell you, burnout is real. I'm gonna give you the definition to help lay the foundation. Uh, this is the definition that I use, and so you'll be able to build your show based off of this definition. So burnout occurs when passionate, committed people become deeply disillusioned with a job or career from which they have previously derived much of their identity and Mm -hmm. meaning. All right. It comes as things that inspire passion and enthusiasm are stripped away and tedious or unpleasant things crowd in. So that is what burnout is. Again, uh, those who know me know I like definitions, want to be able to define something. I can make it simple, though. Two things that you have to be if you're going to experience burnout. First, you got to be passionate, committed. If you're not passionate, committed about anything, then you're not going to uh, uh, experience burnout. Mm -hmm. Okay, Uh, that is what is uh, uh, required to experience burnout. So it's not necessarily a medical diagnosis. Anybody can experience it. Here's the second thing, and then I'm done. You have to become deeply disillusioned. So you passionately committed, and then you your 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 eyesight, how you view the world, your perspective on things gets messed up. And the one thing about burnout that we have to remember is that there is so many things that have not changed in our environment. Our goals should not have changed. Our desires should not have changed. What happens when you get burned out is how you view things, and so. It's something where you, as an internal, uh, uh, you have to do something about yourself eternal, internally so that you'll be able to get back on track because those goals, those dreams, those desires, whatever you have, those assignments that you have, they do not change. All right. So that is what burnout is medically. Medically. That, that makes sense. Uh, Nico, I'm turning this to you and then to you, Anthony. Uh, Dr. Shepard mentioned about this passionate enthusiasm that gets stripped away. Um, I want to start with you, Anemica, because, you know, we're kind of ignorant. And what I mean by that, um, when you reside in any country, you take that as somehow the example for the whole world, Um, right? So as Americans, sometimes we like to say, you know, because we're Americans, this is just truth, flat across, right? And we never take into consideration what our human partners uh, in other countries are dealing with. Can you just talk to us about that that stripping away process, you know, with with COVID and everything? I think I personally think it's the same for everyone. It doesn't have to be you don't have to be from a particular country to just feel this. I think mental health is for everyone. So for me, 2019 was very difficult personally because I was dealing with a lot of stuff relationship-wise and towards the end I got 
kind of like my dream job. Me and my friend, we were working to build something here in India. We were in the process to make that happen. And when this whole 2020 pandemic hit, he was actually in China and he called me in the middle of the night and he was just like, you know what? Um, I don't think we're going to be able to make it this year. I think we have to drop the whole project and maybe next year as well, because I don't know how long this is going to go for. And all the dreams that I had with the project, because we're going to do it really big. It was going to happen in Mumbai and he was going to come and uh, we're going to work together to build that. So I was uh, beyond disappointed when that happened. I was, I think uh, we were hiring people. We were in the process of like making that happen. So we had to send out mails that I'm sorry, we are not going to be able to do this anymore. You know, it was happening like um, in the beginning of March and I was supposed to visit New York. Uh, it was my birthday as well in March. And this whole thing just hit us. So um, I think it was just so random, but um yeah, the, the way um, I think Dr. Shepard said, uh, you know, I was passionately involved, but it was all crushed. Uh, that And we still don't know what's going to happen. We still don't know when we're going to be able to pick it up and work on it again. So I think it's the same for everyone. It works uh, the same way for everyone, no matter where you are in the world. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Anthony, uh, you know, I, I follow you. Uh, you know, <laughs> we've been connected. Uh, you mentioned when we did our uh, podcast uh, episode, I want to say about a couple months ago, you're a gym owner, right? You had to shut down. And then uh, the reopening phases, you were supposed to open up about a month ago, but then that collapsed. And then I'm. Oh, you're right. right. And I, I remember <laughs> you making a status that, you know, I have to now pursue something else uh, to sustain. And then now I guess there's kind of a reentry, right? So now you're kind of. Um, in operations. Tell us about that stripping away process uh, from an entrepreneur, from a business owner standpoint. That's a story. <laughs> I'll give the short bullet note part. Mm -hmm. So our governor has been doing phases to open us up and we've always assumed as personal training, we'd be considered a professional and personal service, which is considered phase three. Right. And we never been told otherwise. So I went ahead and opened up my business phase three uh, within five days, I was threatened by the state. I was threatened by the county. I had the cops show up and say, you're absolutely not allowed to be open because you're considered a gym, even though all I do is one-on-one -on -one personal training. So I shut down. At that moment, it was eye-opening. I want to just point out one thing. You're talking about burnout. Dr. Shepard kind of talked about passion, and I love that because I'm probably the most passionate person I know, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's so true. So- my passion to do what I love doing, I've never experienced burnout during COVID. I haven't been down. I haven't been depressed. I had maybe 12 hours back in March when we said close in 10 hours and get the heck out of your own business. But after that, I took this as an opportunity. And that's what I've been kind of seeing this as different opportunities. I know you saw my post saying I had to get another job. Right. But what I did was I renewed my real estate license, got back to working with my parents, had a nice long conversation with them. And now I'm reinventing their real estate office with new techniques I learned owning my personal training business. And we got the clear to open actually yesterday. So yesterday is the first day of business again. Yeah. So I'm doing all of those at once. I'm still pursuing that. I'm still pursuing a third project. And if you have the passion and you feel like you're achieving your goals and moving forward, mm -hmm. then that's when you don't experience burnout. And that's kind of where I was leading to, but I don't want to spoil all my pointers and notes I have, but I'll leave it at that for now. <laughs> awesome. We'll talk about getting back on track. And Anthony, I think you hit it on the head. Dr. Um, uh, let's go with you, Dr. Fuller and then Dr. Shepard. Um, when we're talking about passion and rebuilding this, right? Can we start from a medical standpoint? Is there something you can subscribe? Like I see commercials all the time. Uh, for Zoloft and for everything. And I feel like, you know, that's just a pharmaceutical way of saying, you know, like <laughs> cocaine, right? You know, like, I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I just feel like that's basically the same thing. Oh, wait a minute. Don't come from my practice now. You know what I'm saying? Don't come. Don't come. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know, I got the drugs, 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 I don't know. know. It's, you know we don't need know. In, uh, insulin. Uh, man, you know? <laughs> but, but in all seriousness, where do we start medically? We're talking about getting back on track and, and uh, going against this adverse effect of burnout. Uh, Dr. Fuller and then Dr. Shepard, where do we start medically? 
you know, so when I have a patient that comes in very stressed out, overwhelmed, just with life, work, balancing home life with work life. So I try to get to the root of the problem because there's always some other things that we're dealing with battling mentally when we can't handle our outside forces, you know. So um, I first, you know, try to ask them to make sure they're not depressed. We do depression screens. And then we also do screening about smoking, um, drug use, alcohol use, because these factors some people use to cope with as far as um, trying to get out of the, the burnout phase or whatever, help them through the burnout phase. And then I will say, some of them will say, well, I'm a bit anxious. And um, so then they say, some want pills, of course, some prefer to do some counseling. So I would say it's the best to tar- start off with counseling therapy um, if I was asking them if they have vacation time, PTO time, can they take a vacation? Can they take a break from work? Um, and if not, then try some therapy, some counseling. And then, you know, I'll let Dr. Shepard speak on that treatment part, you know, because I mainly would treat if they have true signs of depression or anxiety, stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it's no magic pill for burnout. You just need to take a mental break. You need to take a physical, <laughs> you know, step back on life and just say, I need to take care of me for a minute. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I would let him speak on that treatment part. So I don't know if he has something <laughs> better. Just not gonna uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, that that was great, uh, Dr. Fuller. So <laughs> what now what I'm going to add on to it, continue to build on it, is that we need to determine whether the person is distressed versus disordered. Um, so uh, that is that is huge because mm-hmm. all of us are going to experience burnout. If you're passionate and committed people, that's why I like what Anthony was saying. Uh, you know, your passion can fuel you, but when you get drained and we all feel like that because we're human, mm-hmm. that's going to happen. But that doesn't mean that you're disordered. So we have to know what the difference is between distress, distress, everybody will feel because we're human. And so we all have stress. But disordered means that you're not functioning properly. When you're not functioning properly, that's when we know that there needs to be an extra layer of help, an extra layer of care. That's when you know that, yes, you need to get in to see uh, someone for uh, counseling. You might even have to be uh, on a medication because this is a true disorder. And so that is how we determine, make that distinction. Uh, Dr. Fuller talked about the screenings and different things that we would do in order to help make that distinction. That is so important. And let me just tell you something, one more thing, because, again, I love burnout. So you can see I'm passionate about this. I I teach, I lecture on this. You want to make sure that you're not running around on fumes. Um, Mm -hmm. That's what happens. Just like I have this gas uh, fireplace in my house, and when it don't light, yeah, you may not see the flame, but you sure smell those fumes. And that's what happens when people are burnt out. Uh, we may not see that fire or passion in you, but we definitely smell you because your fumes are toxic. And so we got to make sure that you're not running around on fumes because when fumes get lit, what happens? They blow up. Mm-hmm. And so that's exactly what happens when people are burned out. Make sure that flame is still going on. Awesome. Now, how have you dealt with trying to keep that flame burning and not uh, evolving into uh, fumes basically imploding into something. Oh, I, I struggle a lot. I think I still, I, I have this anxiety, I have anxiety and I have depression, clinical depression. So I know that sometimes I just break down in tears and I, I sometimes go in my drafts folder in my mail and I just look at them, but I do have a therapist and, um, yeah, we do video sessions, I think, um, yeah, once a week, I try to do it once a week. And I also went recently went to a life coach and I think, I'm just trying to keep it together. I'm, I'm uh, seeking professional help because I know something, these things are beyond my control. I mean, this whole pandemic thing, I didn't have any control over this and I don't want to blame myself, sit here and just like cry because something I was really passionate about, I was really committed to didn't happen, but it's okay. There are, there are other different good things that are happening. So I think uh, professional help uh, is when you need it, you should just go and seek and, and, and get all the help that you need because, um, yeah, you can't have it um, your way all the time. So you just have to learn to accept it and um, do it, do the good things, whatever you can do better. Can I jump in on that? Yeah, jump in. I got something for you. <laughs> I love, I'm a lifelong learner, and this is might be like the best advice or second best advice. Some of the top two advice I've ever heard in my life about this. First thing, everything's your fault. And what do I mean by that? If you take 
responsibility and accountability for everything that happens in your life, it then becomes manageable. When we take things and put it on outside sources and say, you know what? It's out of my control. I can't help it. That's when you start experiencing stress and anxiety. But if you turn it internally, then it gives me back control. And now I have the opportunity to figure out how to make the situation better or even go away in some cases. I, I had a nice, I love listening to podcasts. I was listening to a neuroscientist sure. who was talking about why this is kind of the case. So a lot of people think that dopamine, which is our happy energy, it's hormone, is released when we hit a goal. That's actually not true. What happens is your dopamine gets released in your body when you feel like you're about to obtain a goal. Why is that important? Because now if you're on the right journey and you feel like you're getting close to where you need to be because you took responsibility for something, your brain is going to constantly fire off more dopamine. And now you're just going to feel better and better and better. It's kind of like when you're working on a project and you're or a puzzle and you're right near the end and all of a sudden you're up to 4 a.m. because you're so excited just to finish it. Right. It's those little experiences that constantly trigger a great example of this as far as exercise because that's my field is yeah. david goggins i'm sure some of you might know him but that's what he's done he's turned it internally and that's why he's able to run 150 miles a day because to him he's getting closer to his goal every day and he's never going to hit it but right. he knows he's right there and that's why he's able to push himself above and beyond would you it's pretty would- great advice. Would you say it's it's more uh, in a, in a quick answer? Would you say it's more about uh, falling in love with the process than the result? Oh, hundred percent. Okay, uh, like million. <laughs> how, uh, Doc Sharp? I want to throw this to you. How do we manage how we feel? Um, I I think you know that I think that philosophy of internalizing it, taking ownership over it. I think all of that helps. I I try to do it to the best of my abilities. Um, candid moment even at my best right like today was arms and back day i personally enjoy arms and back day that's my favorite body to exercise second is legs day third is chest right even when things are going right you work out your meetings go well in your professional life there is a breaking point like i think everybody has this point where it just kind of just you know collapses right how do I manage that? Is it is it safe to break? And if so, how? Okay. Now you've asked about three questions up in there, Cody. Man, <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, you asked you, you asked about emotions, right? You asked about is it safe to break? Yeah. And, and, and how do you break? So, man, that's yeah. Yeah, that's that's a lot. Um, well, let me let me let me make it personal and to okay. piggyback off you and Nimica, like Nimica talked about, like sometimes I'll I'll break down. Like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not a crier, you know. I just don't do that. I mean, I cry. I mean, of course, I'm a human being. I have tear ducts, right? Mm-hmm. But I don't like to just cry. But Monday didn't go well for me. Yeah. Meetings that were supposed to happen didn't go well. Yeah. Right. But podcast, yeah. there was a lot of technical difficulties. Like it was just a lot, it was just a lot of stuff on top of stuff. Yeah. And it started off so promising. You know, right. I got up on time, I didn't drag out of bed, I got <laughs> my miles in, I hit legs, you know. Yeah. There was so much hope, but by by noon, I just wanted to like I wanted to quit. Right. right. Like it was too, it was too much of an emotional swing. Yeah. Um, how do we as human beings? Um, do we handle that breaking point? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and we all have breaking points uh, and we all will come to breaking points. And if you reach yours and if you break, uh, we have to know that that is OK. All right. Uh, and some people may not even agree with me even on that, but that is OK uh, because we're 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 human. All right. Uh, there are so many stressors that have occurred during this uh, year of 2020. Um, I dealt with my own personal stresses even before the pandemic hit. I had two major deaths in my family, one of them being a seven-year-old nephew that died. You can't tell me that that was not impactful on me. I mean, it just literally wiped me out. And then here I am 
got to be on top of it for the pandemic. Because let me tell you, my practice and the business, uh, uh, you know, for for physicians has like escalated. And even though some of us are not getting paid like we're supposed to get paid, we still got to be out there working. Um, so these things will bring us to our, uh, our our breaking points. What we have to do is recognize what things rejuvenate us. Uh, that is very important to know. Uh, you have to know what makes you feel good and what makes me feel good or what rejuvenates me. And I shouldn't even say make me feel good. What rejuvenates, that's probably better, uh, is different for other people. Um, again, I'm a I'm a man of faith. Uh, so I'm going to be I'm going to be praying. Uh, I'm be praying to God. I'm reading my Bible um, and I have to recognize what things rejuvenate my spirit. Um, and again, physicians, we are not opposed to spirituality. We're not opposed. You know, that's such a lie. Over 70 percent of the physicians are spiritual people because they understand it's more than just a physical body. We're made up of spirit, man, too, and our emotions. And so recognize for yourself what rejuvenates you and make the most of it. Even if you can't get out and do as much of it as you want to, make sure that you find out what that thing is and do more of it. That makes sense. Dr. Fuller, uh, breaking, right? Uh, uh, Dr. Trevor hit on finding that thing that allows me safely to rejuvenate myself, whatever that is, if that is spiritual focus, spirituality, if that is some type of meditation, some type of exercise, whatever is going to build the internal consciousness, I guess is the the best way to say it. If somebody comes to your office and is in a broken state, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And obviously now you have to treat this individual how do you build the case? And then I'm going to shift this because, Nimica, you hit on it. You talked about, you know, you're working on a project and now you had to send out emails that we can no longer do this. And then to you, Anthony, how do you build this case for the employer uh, that this is real, mm-hmm. uh, they need time off, uh, and this is what I prescribe? Right. I am big on giving my patients days off. Like, how many days you want off? You want a week, two weeks? <laughs> Because I know how I feel. I know it's hard to work when you're feeling down, depressed, stressed. Um, I even tell my patients, get FMLA forms from your, your employer, from HR. I can get, so your job will be protected. Um, you get 12 weeks off, you know, not, hopefully not back to back, but over a year's time to allow you to regroup, to do what you need to do, to get back to, you know, back to your normal spot in your job. Because you're no good to them if you're not mentally, physically, um, spiritually, emotionally well. You're just no good to your employer. So um, that's why they have a PTO time and patients should take it. <laughs> they have sick days. They should take it. You know, so I definitely, without a doubt, would give my patients time off. I would say, do you need um, to get counseling during this time off? Or if you want to try medications, we have that too. You know, if some of them have some underlying depression, anxiety, mild cases or whatever. Um, I don't mind prescribing because, you know, I know these things can help. Um, to cope better with life. It doesn't take away the issues that you're dealing with in life, but helps you deal with it better, you know? Um, so yeah, I'm not big on giving that time off. I mean, I mean, I wish I can get time off like that. But anyway, but my employees, they understand, they understand that yes, providers need mental days. And I like, I just say, okay, I'm not coming in today or I need next Friday off. Just take a little break. And they're good with that. So, you know, as long as you have an employee that's willing to work with you, if not, then you get your doctor's note. And that should be good enough. <laughs> so that makes sense. And Emika, you are an angel investor. Um, you fund projects. You mentioned that you had to cancel a project. You were on your way uh, to New York, and just kind of the world collapsed. Right? Um, what was that conversation like? Right? Like what? What is it like to go to your partners and say that I can't? Can you explain that for us? Yeah. Well. First of all, when it, the whole thing hit us, I just didn't want to believe it because I was so much in shock. I was just like, oh, it's just a flu. It's going to go away. People are just making a huge deal out of it. This is not, you know, it's blowing out of proportion. It's not going to be like, oh, the world is not going to collapse no matter what. we got to move on. We're going to do the things that we have to do. So I just didn't want to believe it. For the longest time, I just wanted to um, have this faith that it's going to go away. And the, it was March, it was April, it was May. And I was just like, okay, I don't want to have this conversation with my people because 
you know, they were hopeful. Um, and I have to sit down and tell them that, you know what, this is something that is beyond my control and it's not going to go away. And I, I was the one who was kind of giving them that, you know, uh, yeah, it's going to be fine. Just give us some time. It's going to be all, all right. But when it was not going away, I eventually had to sit down and talk to them about, you know, how this year is definitely it's, it's not going to be it's not going to happen. Maybe n not even next year. We don't know. Um, yeah, what's what's to come? We don't know the cure. We don't know if we're ever going to get a vaccine. We don't know if we're going to be able to free travel and, you know, build what we're trying to build. So it was just a, it was a tough conversation, but I had to do it. I had to sit down and 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 tell them that, you know, um, yeah, I was I was hopeful, but it's just it's beyond my control. And yeah, we just have to. It is what it is. So the, I, I told them to focus on their own individual selves and do something that they like. And hmm. yeah, that's all I can do. Do you think that um, one more question and then I'll turn it over to you, Anthony. Do you think that when as a leader of an organization, uh, as somebody that is responsible for individuals up under you uh, in like payroll and things of that nature, um, should the government step in? And then if so, how much? Um, I think it's different for every country. I think in India, we can't really expect the government to just step in and, and uh, you know, help us out. We would like that very much, but we just don't have that system in, in my country yet. So it's a struggle, but I think it's it's different for other countries. I, I have heard the, I have heard in Germany, they have given payouts to um, private uh, you know, business owners and entrepreneurs to just keep their business up. I, I, I watched, I, I think I listened to in a podcast or I watched a video. Um, their government has done really well, even during this pandemic. So small businesses actually didn't um, go bankrupt or didn't run out of, you know, uh, 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 they didn't have to shut their business down. They, they're still going on. So I think in India, it's still kind of far from reality to expect our government to step in and help us like entrepreneurs who are trying to build something. So, yeah, I think for my country, it's, it's just, it's just a no. Just a no. That makes sense. Anthony, you're a entrepreneur. You are a business owner. Uh, you have used this um, as an opportunity as the old expression goes, never waste a good chaos. But do you feel that the U S government could have done more? Or should or or and and again and, and granted, I don't think it's subscribing to a political ideology. I just think you know when crap hits the fan, right? And you're like, you know, what to do? That's when there should be some type of response. What is that response? And then how much of it should have been? You do not want to know my answer. <laughs> no, I'll be honest. I'm a very honest person. We never should have been shut down. That's the end of it realistically it's an individual's choice whether or not they want to show up to a business but once you strip the rights from a business owner to operate then the government has to step in and a great example is throughout covid 3000 gyms across the state of new york have joined together and we're all in a group and every day a gym goes out every single day and i'm not making that up even yesterday two went out even after they told we can open, because you know what? We're five months back rent. And they stripped out all the opportunities and all the chances we had to do something. Yes, there needs to be safety. Yes, there needs to be protocol. I 100% agree with both. Yes, this is real. But you take the rights from us to own and operate a business and tell us we're not essential. That's what's bothersome. Why are some businesses more important than others? It should have been equivalent across the board. A great example of this, I did a great episode on COVID, was our state ran a study to show the mortality rate of COVID based upon obesity clients. And I'm right. sure both doctors can confirm here that obesity is what's actually killing people. It's they're getting COVID, they're overweight, and then they're ending up going in the hospital and being sick. It's not really so much the healthy population. Yes, it's happening to them. Don't get me wrong. But the percentages are 86%. So why shut down an industry that's sole purpose is to help people move better, live better, and live longer? That doesn't make sense to me. Because to us, fitness is essential. And it kind of relates to burnout where uh, you love working out, Cody. So this is going to relate right. perfect to you. 
<laughs> when you work out, you are not building muscle in a gym. That is a very common misconception. I'm doing bicep curls. My bicep isn't growing. Right. It's actually the 48 hours afterwards where mm-hmm. your body's regrowing that muscle to be bigger and stronger. And you're doing that through rest. You see that? You're mm-hmm. resting in order to get stronger. You exert yourself, then you take a step back. You exert yourself, you take a step back. And that's what's going to ultimately forgo that burnout. And it's also equivalent to your body is a direct extension of your brain. Your brain controls everything. And I'm, everyone agrees with that and knows that. Right. So if you don't take care of the most important organ at all, something's going to go wrong. So your brain needs to be in control. And it's all about mindset. I don't work. Everyone always tells me, how do you work 15, 16 hours a day? I don't work a day in my life. I absolutely love what I do. To me, it's fun. I go home and I talk to my fiance about ideas for the gym. Mm-hmm. I love it. And it just gets me excited. And once you change your mindset to work on things that you love doing, you just keep getting that dopamine hits all day. And you just feel great. Flying kite high. But right. with the COVID stuff, that we never should have been shut down. And I believe the population of business owners should have been educated. I believe there should have been protocols put in place. But got to give people a chance to live. Everyone's losing their livelihoods. Hey, me... Sure. sure. Hey, hey, Cody, let me just respond. I don't want to – I'm not necessarily in full Absolutely. disagreement, but there's some clarifications right. to be made about what Anthony stated uh, because I don't want people right. to leave here with a, a misconception because I, I can't fully subscribe to what Anthony stated. Um, I, I want to make sure that people understand that there was a lack of leadership in regards to how this – a rollout for how to treat the pandemic. Uh, I just put a post up today. The number one reason for us not being able to flatten the curve was the lack of leadership. All right. If there had been good leadership coming from the head on down, I'm not mentioning sure. names, then we would have been able to have the protocols and procedures that Anthony was talking about. Now, people have to shut down certain businesses because there was the lack of leadership and there were not certain protocols or, or, or certain uh, procedures put in place. Um, I am in favor of a shutdown. The shutdown worked. Uh, the countries who shut down completely, we see what happened. Spain now is having, um, is almost on par. And actually uh, some studies say right now, Spain is about to surpass the US that was just out today because they started to ease the restrictions. So there is a purpose for shutdown of businesses. I know business owners don't like that. I'm a business owner myself, uh, but we have to understand the purpose of that. Uh, and so uh, there was this big discussion between economy versus the lives of people. Uh, also, I want to put a little bit more clarity about it, around obesity too. Sure. Um, you know, uh, uh, obesity, uh, I don't know necessarily if that killed the people um, who or uh, who have yeah, you, go check out PubMed, you can actually see studies done through COVID stating that obesity is the number one factor people are dying from this. They did a comparison study with Vietnam, and Vietnam, to date, I just looked it up, had 27 deaths in the whole country because their obesity rate is three percent. And if you look at countries that haven't really been affected, it's because their obesity rate is low all across the board. And that's something that people are really realizing now. They also did one for the vaccine coming out that's in phase three trials. They're showing that it's not going to be as effective in obese patients itself. So even when we get a vaccine, if it's not effective in the obese population, which right now is 42%, to me, that's that's the issue. One in four people die from cardiovascular disease. So why isn't that screaming, kick and hammer as more important than the virus that's that mortality rate is what it, like barely above a flu. I mean, I'm not saying it's not bad. Please don't get me wrong, and I don't want people to take that the wrong way, but it's something to be considered to take care of ourselves first. Well, I, as long to, as I have to read that. I was, I was trying to finish it. I have, I have to Sorry. read that study. I have to read that study regarding obesity because I have not seen that, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much up on stuff regarding. Uh, the thing that I want to make sure that I know what's going on in the United States of America is the healthcare disparities. All right. And that is one of the major reasons why uh, we are seeing uh, uh, COVID uh, plummet with uh, uh, what I mean by plummet or destroy within the black and brown communities. Um, Yes, because they do have more core core morbid uh, conditions. But why is that? And that is because of health care disparities. They cannot get 
They cannot get to the doctors. They cannot get to the medicines. And if you remember very clearly, uh, you actually had to have a prescription or be able to get a COVID test the first couple of months when all this started. So if you don't have a regular doctor, so you're telling me to go get tested. Yeah. So, so yeah, you know, I, I, I hear what you're saying and I have to read those studies, but I have to make sure I have some clarity uh, based off of what I understand and the, and the research that I do, you know, regarding COVID-19 that, you know, that these things, you know, I, I don't know, man, you know, I have to read, but I, I, I love the objections, man. I love that. I live for this. I, I know for sure what's going on here in the United States of America. I, I get it. Um, no, I, I, I think the dialogue is we have something, this existential threat that um, was totally, uh, I can't say it was unforeseen because we knew about it in 2019, but I will say it wasn't taken as seriously as it should have been. And then when it hit, everybody scrambled, right? It was like, what to do? And then when you already had pre-existing things in society, whether it was health disparities, income disparities, however, whatever, it just added on to that. And now you have total implosion. So the last, one of the last questions are the last question. And I'll start with you, Dr. Fuller, then Dr. Shepard, uh, then Anemica, then Anthony. Um, where do we go from here? So we have this. We have a pandemic that has created mental uh, anguish, I think is the appropriate word, uh, on top of things like uh, the ki- not the killing, but the seriously wounding of Jacob Blake. Right. Uh, that was yesterday, Milwaukee. Um, where where do we go? Right. As as health professionals, as entrepreneurs. You're you're subscribing, you get let's say you get a call, Dr. Fuller, Trump calls you. He doesn't tweet you. He picks up the phone, calls you and says, I'm replacing you with Dr. Fauci. What do we do next? (laughs) Oh, I'm placing Dr. Fauci with you. My bad. I got it inverted. My bad. Um, I mean, I, I don't get the issue he has with Dr. Fauci. I think he's great in what he's doing. He's an expert. So, um, if Trump called me, I would like to talk to him on behind the scenes first to get to find out where he's at and he can I can educate him a little bit more on medicine because it's not his specialty, of course. So um and then try to move forward, try to help him to see both sides of the coin. I know he's in favor of businesses, you know, my parents own businesses too. So um I'm all for business getting back on their feet. Um definitely doing it safely. Um, we see what happened when we had kids go back to school, you know, they had to shut you know, schools down again or classes down again. So it's very scary. And I also, cause I'm a healthcare provider, I'm not in the hospital, but I feel for my colleagues that work, um, I mean, just around the clock, nurses, doctors, respiratory therapists, everyone just burned out. That's what a major burnout is. And they're my prayers because I couldn't imagine, you know, just hospitals always full with COVID patients. You see patients dying one after the other. And then I don't have any personal uh, close family members that had it that I'm aware of other than uh, I think my uncle, but he survived it. But um, those family have to deal with losing a mem- member in the hospital, not able to visit him, maybe get a, a FaceTime call or whatever. But it's really tough, you know, so a lot of things we have to discuss. We have to really. I mean, I'm a woman of faith and need direction from God, honestly. I, I pray about it. And, of course, we all want this to go away so we can get back to some form of normalcy. But this is where we are right now. Um, but, yeah, it definitely needs to be, you know, protocols on how to safely open things up. I do agree, you know, as far as the gym is very important, you know, because, Cody, you go, you know, and you look amazing. A lot of people that's in the gym, my sister goes, her husband goes, they look amazing. I mean, ripped, yeah. <laughs> you know, and along with that, they also eat healthy, you know. Yeah. Um, we always say like 80% of it is dealing with our diet, you know, with the obesity problem. But, um, you know, change our eating habits, exercise, and all these things help us to feel better, to be less stressed, um, and then we can fight off infections better. You know, we need to stick, honestly, to an anti-inflammatory diet because inflammation in the body definitely don't help you to recover well. You right. know, and that includes eating healthy fruits and vegetables, you know, um, lean meats, you know, but, you know, these things you have to talk to nutritionists about and then exercising, that definitely helps. Um, 
I kind of just kind of forget your other <laughs> question you wanted me to talk about. Um, but for the most part, you know, this is why I'm mad with that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's tough. Dr. Fauci's in a tough spot. Um, yeah, they should have been better leadership from the White House down. The governor's in Illinois. I mean, I think he did a great job. I mean, the mayor in Chicago, I think she's done a great job, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, but I do get the the owners. I, I Yeah, the, my family did with the same thing. You know, they're hoping that they would get some type of relief from the government, you know, as far as keeping their business afloat, you know. So, yeah, I'm just praying for a turnaround <laughs> in this whole situation, honestly. I get it. I'm I'm trying to catch uh uh Darren Kawada's husband. Uh <laughs> I'm like if I can get built like that, I'll oh, be yeah. all right. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Whatever whatever he is on. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> no, no, let me talk to it. <laughs> Dr. Shepard, you get a call from Trump, not a tweet. He says, Look, we're in the middle of the Republican National Convention. I need you to speak. I don't want to hear I don't want to hear anything from Dr. Fauci. You're gonna speak. And you're going to give the rollout plan for the next three months. What is that plan? <laughs> uh, first, make sure I, that you know he hasn't been smoking something. <laughs> but uh, but uh, you know, seriously, um, you know, I, I, I echo what Dr. Fuller uh, stated. What I would add to it is that uh, I would empower the local public health officials. Uh, that's what I would do, uh, because one of the things that we have uh, uh, um, missed out so much, and I'm really getting to understand more of the whole political system here in, in the United States of America, the people who have the most power is not the president of the United States, it is the local public health officials. Uh, and so uh, I would work and figure out a way how to make sure that I could disseminate information to empower those people. Um, one of the things that I've noted being here in Baltimore uh, is that the governor, I, I really believe he did a good job, but the Baltimore city commissioner, mental health commissioner, well, I'm sorry, she's a health commissioner, not mental health, but just health commissioner. She did an awesome job, but she got a lot of flack because she wouldn't uh, open up the city before the suburbs and surrounding uh, uh, counties would. So a lot of people got mad with her, you know, you know, so I understand where Anthony was coming from, but let me tell you, what she, what she did, she was continuing to use the statistics uh, that Johns Hopkins was uh, producing every day. And now we're hearing over in, uh, in D.C., uh, in D.C., Baltimore continues to be one of the top three cities. Listen to what they're saying over there of hot spots for, uh, 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 for the COVID-19 uh, uprising or, 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 you know, readmission of, of cases. Um, I may not be saying that correctly, uh, the whole medical term, but yeah, it is our local public health officials that we need to get to know so that they can work with our schools, with our business owners, entrepreneurs, all those folks. And when there is a meeting of those minds to understand, then we can open up safely. And so that's what I would recommend uh, to our current president. Awesome. 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 Let me come going to you. Trump gives you a call. You're not even <laughs> just cause. I think Ron, Modi. It's Modi. <laughs> I, I know, but <laughs> he's bringing in reinforcements. He has his rising angel investor entrepreneur from India who is killing the game. He's like, what shall we do? I don't trust our economic advisors. I fired them all, <laughs> which. He's fired a lot of them. He's got like a couple left. What are you advising Trump? What are you advising the world? What is the next steps for the next three months? Um, I think before I answer that, you said earlier, Cody, that um, due to COVID, things just kind of stacked up. I personally believe that COVID hasn't changed anything. It has just kind of showed us the real picture of our society, of how dysfunctional we are. Um, how dysfunctional our healthcare is, how dysfunctional we are when we are just uh, faced with such a, um, you know, um, so a pandemic situation or something that is so difficult that it, it's not, it's nothing new. It has happened before. Um, it, it's nothing uh, extraordinary, but we just didn't know how to handle it because we were so busy doing other things. So I don't really think COVID has changed anything. It has only showed us what we were um, initially, how dysfunctional we were. So if 
Um, now I think we should figure out uh, how to educate people more, and in, in, especially in India. I think in, in India we need to do that a lot more. We have a population of one point, close to 1.4 billion. So for us, um, educating people is so much more important than anything else. And we have people from, it, it, this is a country where every state has a different culture. Every state has a different language. So I think uh, reaching those people and telling them what it actually is and what it can do to you. And uh, I think that's the most important thing as of now. And obviously opening up businesses. Um, so many businesses have gone. Uh, they have declared bankruptcy here. It, my, my gym uh, has closed their business. I mean, it's no longer in business. And um, yeah, so they're, they're like, we're, we're trying to figure things out. They have so many pending bills. So I think um, slowly just opening up the process of, um, you know, the, the businesses, start opening up the businesses that is actually um, important. So, so many small businesses are just gone. And I, I also think that manufacturing um, in India and locally is a big market because we are all like kind of against China. We've already banned wow. their apps and a lot of Chinese goods. So I think that's also another thing for uh, local entrepreneurs to get into the manufacturing business. So I think that's that's a big step that we need to take and figure this whole whole thing out, how we can produce more locally, more makes things. Sense, makes sense. I, 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 I totally agree. I think COVID has created a transparency moment for the world. Uh, I totally agree with every point that you've made, and because that was I uh, was brilliant. I didn't even know that every uh, basic section of India has its own like language. Did I know that? I need to do some more reading. Uh, <laughs> definitely, Anthony. The Republican National Convention is going on. Trump is like, look, I don't need any more thirty second clips from Herschel Walker. He's embarrassing me up there, right? I've been I was watching it last night. You know, I watch. Of course, I got a podcast. Of course, I love politics. I'm going to have on um, Malik Eugene. I'm going to get Dr. Shepard. It's about to be dope. That's coming down later. That's another episode. That's in September. But, um, you know, right now it's just high stakes. You know, the presidential election up. Listening to you, it sounds like you're not voting for Governor Cuomo again. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh I like Chris God, Cuomo. No. Chris, get me on your <laughs> show. No way. So, um, he comes to you in all seriousness. You're speaking on behalf of the business community. You have personally been impacted. You've had to make pivots, right? And you've, you've allowed this opportunity to uh, enhance you, but it was a pivot nonetheless. What do you advise the president on? Simple. The thing this country was built on, power to the people, man. That's what it's all about. It's all about the people that live here, not the people who run the country. They work for us. We pay them. We pay all their salaries. That comes out of our tax money. The simple truth is I'm just going to, I don't talk about things I don't have proof on. Sure. So I'm going to talk simply about Governor Cuomo for a second and how it relates to gyms. Sure. So after he decided we were no longer phase three, we assumed phase four was his last phase and he made that very clear. Well, he took us out phase four the day before and then didn't give us an opening date at all. And he said, we're closing definitely. Rumor out of Albany said he was going to wait till six months after a vaccine was produced until gyms would be allowed to open. In that case, no one would make it. So what happened was 3,000 gyms across the state of New York filed a class action lawsuit against Governor Cuomo in Jefferson County. You can look it up and find it. And that Friday, before he announced on Monday that we can open, discovery was due. Discovery means it's his job through the attorney general to bring evidence about why gyms were closed. I want all of you to take a wild guess how much evidence he submitted. Zero. That's why legally binding, he had to open us on Monday and why he made that announcement. It was not statistics. It was not his doing. It was strictly because he had no other choice. We had a study done through California, 0.004% of trace that come from contact tracing came back from gyms, 0.004, statistically zero. Sweden stayed open the whole time. They showed gym goers were less likely to get sick and they were more likely to be asymptomatic from COVID. These are things that kept coming out and showing that gyms were not the problem. Gyms were actually the solution. We want to fix an issue. I say always go to the root cause. That's what everything should be about. Stop looking at the blanket, start looking internally. And 
The reason being is obesity news was getting us sick. Obesity news was making your country sicker. It became a freaking joke. COVID-19, oh my God, I gained 19 pounds. That's an hour running joke with people, and I don't think it's funny. Mm-hmm. Where you, we have another virus that comes through, right? Now our obesity rate has skyrocketed these last five months. What's going to happen? Guess what? The same exact thing. It's going to be worse. When the flu season hits us, guess who's going to be hurt? The people who are sick and the people who are elderly. The ones who don't take care of themselves. you got to take care of this you got to take care of this, and that ultimately is going to make you feel better, live longer, and not get severely sick from things that might come around. And I am – it's disgusting to me that the rate is 42%. That is disgusting. That is obese. That is not overweight. Sure. And this is the eternal issue that needs to be addressed. We all need to take responsibility, like I said before – and internalize the actions, if we took care of ourselves as a society before COVID hit, our death rate would have looked a lot like Vietnam and other countries whose obesity rate is below 5%. And this never would have been an issue. We never would have been shut down. We never would have had our economy down like it has now. That, to me, is the root of this cause. And that's something we need to work on now to prevent this from happening again. Awesome. All right, look, guys, I appreciate it. You guys are fantastic. You know I'm going to have you back on. Anthony, you know I'm going to have you back on. And then because I'm going to connect I'm with you. I'm going to back. Back. get on your podcast, and I'm going to have you back on, Dr. Harris. You know you're my aunt, so I'm going to see you. So it's not like I'm not going to see you, right? So, Dr. Shepard, I'm going to be on your show again when you invite me, whatever that is. You know? <laughs> so, hey, look, next week's episode, Cancel Coaster in the Church. I have some amazing guests, Pastor Billy Jamel Evans, Pastor Naomi Williams, Pastor Marcel Fears, Prophet Lonnie Davis. And I think legends all know I gotta verify the guests. But look, it's gonna be dope. We're gonna go there. To, we're gonna we're gonna go there, go there. But look, we got I want in a minute, Anthony, where can they connect with you? Give your sign off. You can find me on all social media platforms. My name is Anthony Amen. My gym name is Redefined Fitness. My podcast is Health and Fitness Redefined with me, Anthony Amen. I'm on all platforms streaming live. Like I said, next Saturday, we're having a keto debate, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be heated, and I am stoked. (laughs) Hey, I'm I'm available. Let me know, man. You're in, in, man. (laughs) And then we go, where can they connect with you? Where are you at? Yeah, um, you can connect with me on Instagram. It's just my name, Anamika Datta. I also have a website. It's anamikadatta.com where you can check out some of my uh, literary works. Also, I have a podcast. It's a spoken word poetry podcast. It's called Spoken Word by Anamika. It's available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Uh, do listen to it and do give me feedback because I'm, yeah, I'm really excited to act, finally put myself out there and do some poetry with people. So, yeah, that's all. Awesome guys, connect with Anamika. It is I've I've seen her stuff. Is is there, Doctor Harris? Where can they connect with you? You, I'm on Facebook, Tawanda Harris Fuller. I'm on Instagram as well. I think it's Doctor T two thousand three. I don't know, but you could just find me um with just put my name in there. Awesome, awesome, Doctor Shepherd, my man, my brother. Where can they connect with you, man? I can connect with me so different in many ways. Uh, again, you find me on all social media platforms. Uh, there's, there's a spelling of my name, Shepherd. Only one way to spell a real Shepherd. So that's so that's that's how you spell it. Um, and uh, two weekly podcasts I have: Friday, six p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is a more of a, a health uh, uh, of interest uh, podcast. And then on Saturdays at twelve noon. I have what's called the Spirit in Mind podcast, where it's a critical collaboration between mental health professionals and faith-based leaders. And so we are growing uh, in both podcasts. I've just made so join me. You can uh, find me on Facebook on those uh, those two different times consistently for the last five to six months, every Friday, every Saturday. Um, yeah, I'm starting to feel a little bit of burnout, but I'm passionate and committed about it. And so... Uh, I love uh, doing what I do. So look look me up. It will do you some good. Awesome. Guys, connect with them. I've been on the podcast as a guest. I enjoyed it. I don't know if I'm ever going to be invited to the faith leaders one. I just, you know. Oh, we got, <laughs> we got, we got, I, gotta, I always got a sermon. I can take one of Papa's sermons and re-preach it. You know, I know I'm good for that. Look, thank you guys again. Until next time, I appreciate my guests. Bye. All right. <laughs>